Does this count as a cred? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And we've arrived. Hello Germany, nice to be back. And we're here. Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome down to a brand new video right here on Think Park Insanity, where today we are here at Fantasia Land. Now this is a park I've wanted to get to for a very, very long time. And of course there was a bit of a flying visit earlier in the month. Well today we're here to stay for two days on park. So basically we're staying overnight at the Charles Lindbergh Hotel there behind me. We've got two full days here at the park with fast track on fly included. This is gonna be absolutely incredible. Now, unfortunately, I can't take on the rides on this one. We did contact the park. However, sadly, we've not had a response. And the general consensus is, unfortunately, you're not able to do that. So without further ado, let's get inside and let's experience everything that Fantasialand has to offer. Let's go. We're staying at the Hotel Charles Lindbergh, we actually get a separate entrance to the public as well. But yeah, I'm very excited to stay here tonight, really looking forward to checking out everything this hotel's got to offer. And of course, bringing you guys a bit of a look at it as well. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. Let's get inside. And amazing. So here we go, so checking is that way, but today, I think we're going this way. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Look at this view. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? <laughs> so we're staying at the Charles Lindbergh Hotel. You literally walk from reception here and directly into Ruckberg, which of course is the newest area here at the park. Features Fly, the world's only launched flying coaster. And it is one hell of a ride as well. And of course, yes, there will be full reactions, etc., from that and full discussions. But of course, as well as that, you've got all these little bits you can kind of buy here as well, like little cosmetics and stuff, which look really nice. I love the theme with the goggles in there as well. But the view is something else. This is such a unique experience. So we're staying at the Charles Lindbergh Hotel. You get a two-day ticket, which of course you do keep with you. And then you've also got two fast passes there. So I think that's one per day uh, unlimited there for Fly as well, which is absolutely incredible. So without further ado, we're all checked in. Let's go start our day here at Fantasialand. Am I ready to fly? Is that even a question? Of course, let's go. Well, it's so good to be here, literally in the heart of Rookborough. And this place is absolutely incredible. The coaster is all around you. You genuinely have no idea where it's coming from. And it's just, it's sensational, it really is. Let me spin the camera around. got steam coming out of the grates how incredible is that right so starting our day here with a ride on fly let's go right so we've tried a very strict one of course what you can and can't take onto the ride so unfortunately i can't take you guys into the station but of course i'll share my full thoughts and reactions afterwards let's go you get some beautiful views of rubber as well as you go so I'll go for my ride on fly everything needs to go into lockers and I will speak to you on the other side let's go <laughs> Enjoy. 
enjoy that. That's right, wasn't it? It was a little bit cold. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit freezing. Right, well, we just had our ride on fly. That ride is utterly incredible. It really, really is. It's forceful, it's smooth, it's got some great moments of whip. You get airtime as you go up through that second launch. And overall, the pacing of it does just not let up the entire time that you're riding it. Um, again, the inversion's absolutely amazing. The way that you weave and sort of make your way through Rutborough, it's just an absolutely incredible ride. It really is. Again, it's easy to see why they've basically stopped people taking things into the station. But if you want to kind of get a bit of a taste, then basically sort of sit down as if you were sitting down uh, into a train, basically. It's just sort of comfortably kind of sit down. You're actually facing the air gates. And then as you kind of go around the corner, there's a few bits and pieces and you kind of transition into the flying position. When that actually happens, then it is literally all systems go. And yeah, it is genuinely one of the best roller coasters here in Europe. Our current number two, and in all fairness, after that second ride, because of course we have ridden it before, it's not hard to see why. I'll go for a pork and mustard sandwich, uh, hot food. There is tomato in there though, which I'm not a fan of. But um, it didn't say anything on the menu about it, so yeah, interesting. Regardless, so I'm going to eat this, and then we're going to make our way out into the main park. I oh, know tomato and yours. Excellent. Well, it's good then. So it must have been something else in that case. But yeah, eat the food and uh, head that way. Right. Well, that was really, really tasty. To be fair, it wasn't tomato. It was apple. Let's go for a walk. I think I might need some cake later on as well. Have you seen these? Wow. So as well as a normal day at the park, it's also their Wintrom event, which is their winter event, or basically their Christmas event. Now that's something they were basically starting construction on last time we were here, and it's all now complete and ready to check out. But I'll tell you something, I don't know if I fancy riding that in this weather. Today's definitely not a Chapas day, no way, it is literally freezing. So to those that are brave in it, kudos, but it's empty at the moment. At the moment unfortunately Taron is sadly temporarily closed, but hopefully we'll see it open up later on. Next up, time for a weird Chinese ghost train. Let's go for a ride. It's nice and warm in here, but also very dark. Nice. I mean, if you need a hand, then Fantasia lands the place to come, right? Yep, still on the wiser. Oh well, what's the next? Next up, time for a weird Chinese madhouse. Let's go. And again, no idea, something to do with a wedding, I think. Yeah, strange. Well, with a five minute wait, it's time to go visit the mystery castle. So for those of you that may not be aware, although I'm most sure most of you will be by now, this is an indoor drop tower with uh, various different cycles and various different towers. Very impressive. Let's go for a ride. 
theme is incredibly impressive in here as well. It really does feel like in an old medieval castle. But it does get progressively more dark. Right, well, Mystery Castle. I'm sure if it was running a proper cycle, that'd be really impressive. However, we got one launch up, bit of a drop, back up slightly, and then that was it. Yeah, pretty good to be fair. The whole thing lasted roughly about 25 30 seconds. Real shame to be fair, because if it was running a proper cycle, that'd be a really good ride. So, I mean, we've actually got real snow. Question is, though, is it accidental or is it actually real theming? You know, have they purposefully come and put that here because uh, there's quite a bit of it. This is definitely not something you want to uh, ride in this kind of weather because you get absolutely drenched through to your skin on this. Like, make no mistake, you come off wetter than Valhalla, that's all I'm gonna say. 15 minute wait, let's go. So time for a ride on the park's Vacoma Junior Boomerang Coaster. Should be quite fun. Oh, rake, fun little coaster. Slightly more on the intense side for a Cobra Boomerang, but really good fun. Time for the main event. Let's go on Taron. <laughs> Absolutely love this music as well. It's so epic. Now, when it comes to a well themed roller coaster, Taron does it to an absolute R. The surrounding landscape makes the ride what it is, and with the additional speed, the near misses, and everything else, Taron is a world class coaster at the best. I think Paul completely agrees with that one, mate, don't you? That's good, world class, world class theming. Yeah. I think Intermin have improved on Taron a lot since this, but I'm really interested to get back on it again because I only rode it twice back in June last year, sort of time. And I'd just ridden Gotham City Escape and TARDIS, so it felt a bit flat in comparison. So it's really interesting to see how it rides now with a bit more okay. experience. Experience. <laughs> and this will be my second ride on Tyrone. We only got the one last time, but it was absolutely amazing. Still not a top coaster, but yeah. by far a good contender, contender for it. Just a bit of a queue then, yeah? <laughs> Cattle pen. Right, well, fortunately, we have been spotted by Tara. We're in the queue and the ride's gone down. We did wait it out a little bit, but fortunately, there is no kind of sign that things are going to improve anytime soon. So, with that in mind, we're going to go for a walk, potentially get something sweet to eat, and look for something else to ride. Right, time for a ride on Talak, and this thing looks absolutely bonkers. It really does. It's a Hus top spin, I believe. And uh, yeah, it looks crazy. It's got fire effects, water effects, all sorts of really cool stuff. So, let's go for a ride. what a machine that thing is literally nuts so if we get something like that at old towers one tour with it on the Black Mamba. So Black Mamba is probably the closest you're going to get to Nemesis or the way that Nemesis feels outside of the UK park. But in all fairness, this looks a lot better and it certainly sounds a lot smoother as well. Let's go for a ride. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the speaker sleeps tonight. Hey, it's party time! Woo! It's a fun ride. Uh, it's quite intense in part, but the inversions themselves are very smooth. 
but the whole ride itself is actually not as smooth as I expected it to be. It's very, very janky in certain areas. But the proximity to the rocks, again, that adds something to the ride. And overall, yeah, a really good fun kind of addition to the park. Really good to kind of finally tick that bucket list coaster off as well. Again, it's always been one I've been dying to get on. Um, I've got a real soft spot for kind of inverse, but uh, yeah, I've been better. <laughs> Well, my sweet tooth's kicking and I've got a serious craving and my god, these look absolutely fantastic. Hey, Mrs. TPI, I bet you love that one there. <laughs> but unfortunately, you're not here this time. And you've got little Claire's and stuff like that over here as well, which look absolutely amazing. There's more cakes there as well. A whole choice of them. And, uh, yes. Those your prices. some time out to come and check in here for our night at the Charles Lindbergh Hotel and although the room is quite small it's pretty much on par size wise with the stargazing boards at Alton Towers however this is far more luxurious I'll show you around right so here we are so as I said it is the size effectively of your stargazing pods it's not massive but you've got your own shower and toilet here very nice You've got a window that fully opens up, looks out onto a balcony. I'm not going to open up because it is pretty cold out there at this point. But on top of that as well, we've got Paul checking out his walker pack, which I'm going to show you in a second. We'll get him to walk us through that. We've got two beds, as you can see. Um, what's this do? What's this lift up? Nice, you can put your luggage and stuff in there if you wanted to do, so that's quite cool. You've also got storage underneath there too. You've got a TV. I've got some very nice chocolate that I've just picked up from the uh, sweet shop because I am starving and that looks really nice. TV as I said. But the theme in itself and the actual theme of the room is beautiful. It's, it really does have like that aeronaut sort of feel. Obviously it's an aeronaut cabin. It's themed around obviously the whole Charles Lindbergh and the Hindenburgh and I think all that sort of stuff as well. So it's it's got that aesthetic and it's very, very nicely put together as well. But of course the main attraction here is your exclusive view, which incidentally that is where you come in of Ruckberg, which means we're going to get some fantastic night shots huh, later on. Couldn't time that better, could I? <laughs> so there we are. Anyway, yeah, time to chill out for a little bit and then uh, we'll head back into the park in a bit once we've had a rest. Comfy bed, by the way, very comfy. And as if it wasn't wintry enough, it's now snowing. How's this for a view? Wow. Right, back into the main park we go. Well, this was a tad unexpected. <laughs> Hey Merlin, just in case you were wondering, this is how you do Christmas at a theme park. This is insane. Absolutely insane. Take a leaf out of these guys' books, yeah? word this is just utterly breathtaking all right that's so but yeah breathtaking just wow absolutely wow isn't it we're supposed to not here early what's that we're supposed to not here early but it might have been bad i think we noticed them <laughs> yeah but it's a bit good isn't it it's a bit just, good. just a little bit good yeah definitely Right, time to go have rides on Winger's Fear and Winger's Force, which is a pair of Maura spinning coasters. It's supposed to be quite cool, and they're indoors. Let's go. Well, 
sorry honey, but unfortunately you're not coming for a ride because uh, no dogs, cats or birds. I mean, why are you trying to take your pet on there anyway? I've no idea, but yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not taking my cat on board. Yeah, that was quite something. Uh, yeah, on to force. Fear done, time to go ride force. Let's see how they both compare, but that was uh, quite an experience. That's all I'm gonna say. Right, well, Winger's Fear and Winger's Force, two fantastic Maurer spinner coasters. Both with their own unique little kind of quirks and elements to them. And Force has got a very surprising one in there, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of got a bit of a track that sort of tips you sidewards and then kind of like throws you sidewards. But overall, very smooth, very fast. I mean, for 24 years old as well, absolutely brilliant. It's really hard to kind of compare the two. Um, if I had to pick one, I'm gonna say probably Force, realistically. That kind of sideways trick track that obviously it really does catch you off guard. And then both of them have really weird kind of little bouncy bits at the end as well before you kind of come into the station. But overall, two fantastic roller coasters and uh, yeah, two brand new creds under my belt as well. I bet you can feel the warmth from there, can't you? I'll tell you something, in this flipping cold weather, that is absolute bliss. And that smell. Oh, wood smoke. Beautiful. Well, you always time to go down to the west with a ride on Colorado Adventure. Let's go. Well, I think it's safe to say this has to be one of the hardest flipping rides to actually find an entrance to on the park. Because Paul came last time, spent 15 minutes trying to find it and couldn't. We've literally just flipping walked in every other direction other than the entrance, but we finally found it. So, without further ado, let's go have a ride on Colorado Adventure and share our thoughts afterwards. Well, <laughs> I feel like I've just been violated. Good God, that was. I mean, it's one of them where you don't expect much from a mine train at all. You really, really don't expect much. Oh my God. <laughs> Some of the drops on that, and we sat towards the back as well, like literally two rows from the back. That was insane. Absolutely insane. The best mine train I have ever, and I mean literally ever ridden. Wow. Well, it's safe to say I just can't stress just how much the UK needs to up its game when it comes to bringing events, for Christmas in particular, to life. What Fantasialand are doing and just how much they've got to offer and just how magical it is. Seriously, I am genuinely lost for words of just what they've actually done with this event. And the sad thing is, this is normality for them. This is what they normally do. This is their normal standard. So for us Brits to come here and just be like, you know, I'm genuine, I'm lost for words, I really am. Why is the UK not doing this? Why can't UK parks do this? Step it up guys, it's shocking. Well, time to fly for one last time today before we get more rides tomorrow. Let's go.
wasn't that quite something that's the laser light show that takes place here in Rookborough at half past five half past six and half past seven every evening and the fact we've even just got little things like that in the areas as well I mean there was a, a projection show on kind of Shappas's sort of rock work in and around that I don't know if that's part of uh, winter arm or, or not but regardless of that that was it looked amazing but that was something else that was just absolutely fantastic and a great little addition to an already incredible area right finishing off our day here at fantasia land with their end of the day spectacular which will begin very shortly indeed let's watch this there we go look there at the finale for winter arm here at Fantasia Land. 
But what an incredible way to finish the day. The finale that they put on with the fireworks and everything else. Absolutely incredible. But yeah, let's wrap up our day here at Fantasia Land. Right, well that's our day at the park finished. However, staying of course in Rutborough at the Charles Lindbergh, we also get dinner included and we have a free course meal to look forward to that doesn't sound like it's going to be your average kind of food. So without further ado, we're booked in for 8.30. Let's head down and take a look. And incidentally, before we do, here's our view for the rest of the evening. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Would you like any beer with your ice, mate? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... The fact that he came up before the waitress actually left the table was surprising. But yeah, to be fair, and then you've literally got uh, Wi-Fi ordering. I mean, to be fair, yeah, there we go. That's, that's a lot of ice. But to be fair, I've gone just, just for a nice refreshing Coke. But yeah, we've ordered our food. We'll be here shortly. So starting off with uh, little pasta parcels. These have got uh, ricotta and truffle in. Should be quite nice. And your little dips there on the side. Well, they were really, really nice. Uh, packed full of flavour, and these two little dips are really nice as well. Very different. It, that one always tastes like a uh, like a cinnamony sort of apple dip. Not too sure what it is, but it, it's really nice and uh, that's like an onion or something. But yeah, it's really, 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 really good. Oh, happy happy birthday! <laughs> I, I, I even got you a cake. Thanks, Joe. Oh no, I think someone's had a slice though. You're, you're about six months too late, but I appreciate the oh. effort. <laughs> oh, there we go. Then no, well, yep, there you are. Oh, that's a burger and a half. It looks very nice. The chips look nice, and there's plenty of filling in the burger too. Happy days. Time to dig in. We've even got uh, some random dips which look interesting. Not too sure what some of those are. I would say guacamole, red onion, salsa. Thousand Island? I don't know, it's got a Thousand Island vibe, isn't it? It looks like it, and you've gone for what looks to be two burgers. Yeah, so this was, I thought it was going to actually come up on a like shovel, because that's how it's advertised on a menu. But it's some sort of loaded fries, but the loaded fries all come with two sliders as well. One of them appears to be beef, and one I think is pork, maybe? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Intriguing. Awesome. Well, that was very, very nice indeed, and uh, yes, I was incredibly hungry. Right, so finishing off then with Amelie's apple pudding, which looks very nice. It's got like a, a bit of a sort of cinnamony cream on it. It's got almonds, apple, that sort of thing. Paul, however, has nicked off with my nougat. Hello. Not happy about that. Joe's nougat. Sure, I mean Joe's nougat, yeah. Doesn't look very nougat to me. It looks like a stack of miniature pancakes, but... Yeah, with uh, some Kinder chocolate on top. Win-win. Yeah. Win. Oh, well. Let's see. Ta-da! It's gone. That was really nice. Perfect way to finish it. Well then, that wraps up day one here at Fantasia Land, and what an incredible day it's been. We've got so many rides, and got so many new creds as well. There's definitely been absolute standouts. Of course, getting back on Fly has been the personal favourite. Two rides on that today, and still plenty more to come tomorrow as well. And then on top of that, of course, we've had new credits such as both Wingers, uh, Colorado Adventure, and so much more as well, which, to be fair, have proved a lot more entertaining than I expected them to. So absolutely brilliant but i do want to give a massive thank you to paul for arranging all of this for us and actually you know making it so that i'm able to actually get out here and enjoy this it would of course have been without paul uh, that would have been here so a massive thank you to you and of course full details for luffy pack adventures are in the description below so do head on over check those guys out and drop them a follow but I'd love to know if you've been to uh, Fantasia Land yourselves, whether you've stayed in the Charles Lindbergh Hotel. It's certainly been a highlight. Dinner was absolutely delicious. The room is absolutely amazing. And then, of course, we've got breakfast first thing tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to sort of experiencing too. Yeah, overall, one of the best kind of uh, theme park trips of the year, I've got to say. <laughs> I was just got in the room. But for now, if you have enjoyed the video, hit subscribe, turn on notifications, smash the like button to let me know. Without further ado, my name is Joe, this is Theme Park Insanity, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye guys.